In this insightful discussion featuring Warren Buffett and Charlie Munger, two legendary investors, they share their perspectives on the future of value investing in an era of disruptive technologies, particularly AI. Uh, given the rise of disruptive technologies that can improve productivity significantly, and AI being one of them, how do you envision the future of value investing in this new era? And what adaptations or new principles do you think investors should adopt? And any recommendations for investors to remain successful in this rapid changing landscape? Thank you. Well, I'm glad to take that one. I think value investors are going to have a harder time now that there's so many of them competing for a diminished bunch of opportunities. So my advice to value investors is to get used to making less. And Charlie has been telling me the same thing the whole time we've known each other. That we, 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 we get along wonderfully because... So we are making less. Yeah, well, but that's because <laughs> that mostly, I think, is because we it's larger. We were younger. And was... now, we never thought we could manage 508 billion. No, or one or five. Uh, yeah, the, but I, I would argue that uh, there's going to be plenty of opportunities. And part of the reason there are going to be plenty of opportunities, the, the tech doesn't make any difference or any of that. I mean, if you look at how the world's changed in the, in the years since 1942 when I started, you'd say, well, how does a kid that doesn't know anything about airplanes, that doesn't know anything about engines and cars, and doesn't know anything about electricity and all that? But that really isn't the, that's not the, the world changing doesn't, or new things coming along don't take away the opportunities. What gives you opportunities is other people doing dumb things. Well, the 58 years we've been running Berkshire, I would say there's been a great increase uh, in the number of people doing dumb things, and they do big dumb things, and the reason they do it to some extent is because they, they can get money from other people so much easier than when we started. So you could start 10 or 15 dumb insurance companies in the last 10 years, and you could become rich uh, if you were adroit at it, whether the business succeeded or not, and the underwriters got paid, and the, the lawyers got paid, and that creates, if that's done on a large scale, which it couldn't be done what, 58 years ago, you couldn't get the money to do some of the dumb things that we wanted to do, fortunately. Warren Buffett makes a crucial point about how opportunities in investing arise not from technological disruptions alone, but from the actions of individuals making both wise and foolish decisions. It's a reminder that even in the face of changing times, the fundamentals of sound investing and the ability to capitalize on others' mistakes continue to shape success in the financial world. Uh, and uh, so I think that investing has disappeared so much from this huge capitalistic market that anybody can play in, but that the big money is in selling other people ideas that isn't outperforming. And uh, I think if you don't run too much money, which we do, but if you're running small amounts of money, I think, I think the opportunities will be greater. But then Charlie and I have always differed on this subject. He, he, he likes to tell me how gloomy the world is, and, and I, I like to tell him, we'll find something, and, and so far we've both been kind of right. <laughs> Charlie, wouldn't, wouldn't you, will you budge an inch on that or not? <laughs> there, there, is, there is so much money now in the hands of so many smart people, all trying to outsmart one another and not promote one another and getting more money out of other people. And it's a radically different world from the world we started in. And I suppose it will have its opportunities, but it's also gonna have some unpleasant episodes. But they're trying to outsmart each other in arenas that you don't have to play. I mean, the you look at that government bond market, if you, at the treasury bond market, I mean, you, you've got this one bill that's out of line with the others, and we bought over three billion of it the other day. And, and But the world is overwhelmingly short-term focused. And if you go to an investor relations call, 
They're all trying to figure out how to fill out a sheet to show the earnings for the year. And the management is interested in feeding them expectations that will slightly be beaten. I mean, that that is a world that's made to order for anybody that's trying to think about what you do that should work over five or 10 or 20 years. And I, I just think that I would love to be born today and go out with not too much money and hopefully turn it into a lot of money. And Charlie would too, actually. He just like, <laughs> he, he would find something to do, I will just guarantee you. Uh, and it wouldn't be exactly the same as before, but he would have a big, big, big pile. I would not like the thrill of losing my big pile into a small pile. <laughs> Well, we like my big pile just the way it is. Well, I like. <laughs> we agree on that, incidentally. Okay, yes, we do. <laughs> You're one of the most extreme lovers of the big pile. <laughs> As Warren Buffett and Charlie Munger emphasize, while the investing landscape may be changing rapidly, the timeless principles of seeking long-term value and avoiding the crowd's mistakes remain key to success in this dynamic and competitive market.